Welcome to Venture Ventures episode 21. I'm Jake Friday. Uh, we're going to play some fucking D&D here in a second, but um, uh, so now you're out of your Nihilus <laughs> character? <laughs> you're getting offended by cursing now? Jesus uh, Christ, it's just so aggressive right off the top. <laughs> you're going to play D&D. You're going to like it. Uh, anyways, let's go around. Everyone introduce themselves before we get started. Uh, let's start with Dave. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Dave Roderick, and I play a character who's a Kenku warlock named Prodding Rod, Proddy for short. Uh, oh, Richard, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Richard Cardenas. I play Nihilus Nymerith. He is a Triton sorcerer, and um, he doesn't make noises. He Can makes zero noises? Come on. Oh, no, he makes a lot Impressive. of noise. He doesn't make uh, noises like the Kenku over here. Well, let's go. <laughs> There's no calling coming from his end. To Lex. Uh, hi, I'm Lex. I play the mouse folk Ashwin, who's a fighter. And Brian. Hi, I'm Brian Reist, and I play a uh, human monk named Crispin Oakenshaft. He makes noises from the Wild <laughs> West. And uh, Ryan. I'm Ryan Omega. I play a warlock pig farmer named Orson Akers. Perfect. Acres? Acres. Okay. <laughs> I'm into it. I like it. Uh, <laughs> previously on Venture Ventures, the big bedfellows took a job searching and potentially rescuing a member of the Tricknips Foundation named Alu. After a long journey that included teleportation circles, taking an arcane train, they arrived in Serenity Springs just outside the Viranol Dominion where they uh, had last were told that they uh, Alu was heading. Um, there they fought a crystal imbued troll and uh, then made their way into the hermit kingdom of the Viranol. Upon entering the Dominion, they passed through kind of a customs checkpoint of sorts called the Tukor Room. The mirrored room asked that they declare their true character and what they don't want others to know, amongst uh, other things. Exiting the room, the perpetual dusk of the Dominion impressed itself upon them, yet they carried on into the small town of Priets, the outskirts of which had some weird sinkholes where structures had fell in um, to varying levels. And then um, the town looked deserted except for one structure that had some candlelight coming from it they approached knocked on the door and met a tiefling woman named agatha who invited them in where they saw her many guns and her young daughter danny um apparently so far they are the only residents of the town and you guys went off to bed because it was nighttime. You traveled all day to get into the Viranol and get to Priets. So you had, um, essentially, there's no room in Agatha's house. So she said, pick a, pick a place in the town and uh, you guys bedded down there. Um, early in the morning, you hear, actually... Crispin, your whip starts tickling your ear, and someone had been slobbering on it while sleeping, so it's a little bit like a wet willy. Mm. Um, the fun part is that it actually gives all of us wet willies, then. Oh. <laughs> Not just me. Okay. What? Perfect. Uh, Nihilus had been slobbering on the uh, tails of it, so... <laughs> you get it, too. <laughs> Great. Uh, Wait, I was I was slobbering on Crispin. On Crispin's whip, his remember he said his whip um, would alert you or someone if uh, something was mm -hmm. about to go down. Why? Ooh, why is my face near the whip? <laughs> you guys I told you I sleep with it. <laughs> you guys but sleep I, in a weird. Okay, that, that even. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just picturing things. 
I picture <laughs> that situation is about weird about every I time. Asleep like that. <laughs> you guys are in a big bed. People move in their sleep. I, I, I think about like... So does the whip. There you go. So... <laughs> Who knows? Like, if you did a time lapse on that bed every night, I'm sure just stuff gets weird. Ugh, um, it's an ergonomic nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roddy's oh. our HR. <laughs> um, so you're woken up. What do you do? Crispin and anyone else? Ah, so we, oh, we, we, call, mm. we call these wormies. Kenku's called his wormies. Shh, shh. Everybody be quiet. Some shit's going down. Then you hear a... Boom! Just a very loud shot explosion uh, going off. Uh, so we're indoors right now? Yeah, and it's coming from outside. Can I creep up to a window all sneaky-like and see if I can look out? Uh, those windows are... Uh, you guys are in... Boarded up, right? Of course. Uh, you guys are in the previous tavern, so this place is one of the nice things about it. The windows are boarded up. And it makes it harder for things to get in. Makes it harder to see out. So, Fair enough. Uh, can I very sneakily open the door slightly to see if I can see out? Sure. You, um, you sneak downstairs. I'm not going to make you roll for it. Uh, you peek out and you see you picked the tavern, which is just um, a couple houses down from the small little hut that Agatha and her daughter are in and you see Agatha on top excuse me on top of her house with one of with the biggest rifle you saw on the table the previous night and she's shooting at something damn I can't see what nope does she does it look like she's shooting past where we are or like in a completely different direction oh fair enough um so She's shooting, like, if you're staring straight ahead, she's shooting perpendicular, so, like, off. Does that so make like sense? Down, down the road past where I am. Uh, kind, uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, you're on the, her left, so she's pointing okay. this way. Okay. Does that make sense? She's, I think um, so. Can we Can we see if there's any, like... She's shooting, so I'm guessing maybe there's projectiles coming towards her. Can we see if, like, if we run towards her house? Um, Make a perception we... check, those who want to know that. Uh, that's going to be so... I never roll good on these. Okay. <laughs> Nat 20. Hey. I got a Seven, 10. 17. Okay, so you guys are all downstairs at the front door, kind of huddled up, trying to... <laughs> Are our heads like? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're three stooging it. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um. So, Prodi and all of those who got above a ten, you don't notice anything. You're pretty sure there's nothing coming. There's no projectiles you're Sorry. seeing. Um. So, uh, what, there's you don't see any anything else around her. And then she fires off another shot. I think we should go run over and see what's going on. Who yeah, Prady, Prady wants to run over to Agatha's house. Sure. I want to run over, but I don't want to be seen. And I don't want to run right where she's shooting, making a lot of noise. I think we yeah, should so go around, back around to the side. I kind of figured that noise is loud enough that it doesn't matter at this point. So I don't know <laughs> beeline to Agatha. Okay. Uh, anyone who wants to stealth, make a stealth roll. Otherwise, I'll stealth. That sounds fun. Whether uh, it matters or not. <laughs> I got that 23. Cool. Oh, oh. seven. <laughs> uh, 20 again, but not not 20. Yeah. I'm not with these people. Okay. Um, <laughs> Nihilus, I, if, if I got a seven, I think Nihilus, what is happening is that he's like toddler rolling on the ground, <laughs> just like limbs <laughs> flailing about. <laughs> sure. Tired. I, I don't want to be up. <laughs> he did what now? I think you stepped on my tail because I rolled an eight. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's possible. Yes. <laughs> so from that, you see Agatha kind of peek. She's got her her head cocked to one side, staring down the barrel, and then hearing that, she kind of looks uh, and goes back to what she's doing, fires off another shot, and approaching, um, you don't see anything that she's firing off. She's got a very long rifle, um, and it's got a scope. So, uh, from your vantage point, she's on top of the house, remember, so she's got, um, a different vantage point. Um, if you would like to say something to her, or what would you like to do? Do you know what time it is? <laughs> um, she stops what she's doing after the third shot, looks down at you, and she kind of puts her gun down in, uh, just a relaxed stance. And looks down and he goes, sorry, I have to do this every morning, Other, otherwise the clued uh, tend to get a little aggressive now that the town is emptied. Uh, should be safe, though. They're very afraid of this gun. What What are the clued? What do they want? Uh, they're basically bat people, demon things that suck blood. Um, mm. And they try to come and... Usually, they come in in the uh, morning time. So I just get up and preemptively, once I see him with my scope, I uh, I shoot, and they usually fly away because I've shot a few of them. So, um, and then as she's telling you this, you see a blue sheet of paper, kind of pamph pamphlet size. And um, it starts fluttering, fluttering down the street towards you guys um, and kind of brushes up against uh, Crispin's leg. And then you see a flood of hundreds more of these same color light blue pamphlets um, flooding into town, almost like a uh, tumbleweed. A few tumbleweeds of these pamphlets are coming in and they're all hitting I you. I catch it. What does it say? It says the carnival's coming to town. Get ready. <laughs> That's all it says. <laughs> and you hear carnies. Carnies. They're going to kill everybody. Uh, I I have a thought about this. <laughs> Actually, uh, something I was ruminating on uh, last night. You know how we went through that two core room, and it yeah. said it said pretty clearly, "Speak your intentions" or or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Now I, I couldn't help but um, notice one of us <laughs> didn't speak, um, and Agatha no. was Agatha was saying uh, the the actors come after you if 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 you violate those rules. Now we get something saying the carnival's coming to town. I'm starting just, to get a little nervous. I I. Mm -mm. Oh, okay, but I just feel like actions speak louder than words. Uh, and so... as you're saying that, like, you hear some rumbling, like, carts are coming into town. Um, and uh, you uh, see these color, color, colorful tents on top of these carts. Uh, a lot of them are covered wagons, very ramshackle. Um, they start coming into your line of sight. Bright reds, yellows, purples. Um just brightly stand out against this very dreary, dusk-ridden uh, landscape. All the browns and and grays are just uh, highlighting these bright colors, or the bright colors are highlighting the, the drab drabness. Um, but this carnival's very quiet. You don't um, hear anyone saying anything. Uh, you see a few people, and they're wearing masks, very colorful masks, very different masks. Each person has a different colored mask, different designed mask. Um, and um, as, as is there something you guys would like to do, or um, as this, this carnival rolls into town? I'm not I much for talking to people. Maybe just snatch one of the masks from one of the performers, see if they do anything. Um... So the first cart that comes into town uh, is a, you see a man with a goatee, he's not wearing a mask. Um, the masked people are kind of in the background and 
Uh, this man is very gregarious, and he hops off and introduces himself. He does a cartwheel and a backflip. Uh, and and Nihilus claps. And he goes, hello, one and all. The carnival's come to town. My name is Tyndall. How are you this fine morn? Awake. Tired. Tired. Yes, mm -hmm. it is bright and early, although you wouldn't know it from the perpetual dreariness of everything. Uh, anyways, as I said, I'm Tyndall, and I am the Carnival Barker. I didn't much like that term, but uh, nevertheless, I use it because I haven't found a term that I prefer yet. Um, our leader, her name is, their name is Isolde, would like to speak with you. I-Z-O-L-D-E. Uh, Why? I? Why? Oh, I thought Why you were, you I think we were just asking, like, <laughs> the spelling. <laughs> um, well, um, that's, you can ask her. She um, doesn't run much by me. Uh, we'd, like, we'd like to meet on common ground. Could you send her to us? Oh, sure, yeah. She'll, um, I mean, as you're talking, these masked people are coming down from their various carts, and at this point, some other carts have come around the other side of the town and are moving in, and they're undoing their carts, and looks like they're setting up, putting up tents. Um, Orson, if you would like at this point to run past Tyndall or walk past Tyndall and try to s grab one of these masks, you can let me know. I will do that. So, one of the people... Uh, wearing masks uh, are wearing two of them are wearing masks in this particular cart, the closest cart um, behind Tyndall. And uh, when you try to grab for it, um, roll initiative. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what I get? Oh, okay. Hold on. Ooh, not 20, but I guess 21. Um, 17. Okay, so, uh, and then roll for a, make a dex check, just trying to grab the... Dex check. Okay. Dex check, 18. So you try to grab from one of these, what you presume is a gentleman's... Uh, grab this mask off their face, and um, he definitely quicker than you've seen in a while uh, dives out of the way, and his brother uh, is going to make a reaction attack. Okay. Um... Oh, wait, were as we you're, not all supposed to roll Well, initiative? this is just happening. I'll get your guys' initiative in a second. But as this is oh, happening, oh, 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 oh. Tyndall is going, What are you doing? You don't... This is ridiculous. You don't touch their masks. The, you can't... And as this is happening, and um, uh, the other brother is swinging up with a dagger, probably going to hit in your armpit area, uh, this being of immense light and the most beautiful armor you've ever seen swoops down from the air and essentially reaches her hand out and stops his hand. Um, go ahead and make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Saving throw. Okay. Oh, not good. Um... That would be a two. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure it's a wisdom. Uh, I don't trust my memory on this spell. Okay, yep. Um... So she basically says stop in a very booming 
rich, powerful voice, and you're compelled to stop, and you do stop. Uh, and um, she has four wings, and they're all glowing with a uh, Valkyrie type of helmet on, and as she flutters, floats to the ground, um, she asks you politely not to reach for their masks. They're very, uh, sir, they're very particular about their masks and, um, anything else you'd like to know, Tyndall can answer for you, but I am here to unfortunately deal with, um, something that I agreed to do. Uh, the Strani Acting Company has, I'm doing them a favor as much as it pains me to do so. Uh, two of you did not abide by the words written in the Tuka room. And she's looking at Prodi and Nihilus, uh, and... Nihilus it's, turns away. <laughs> Just she, like <laughs> looks away. <laughs> she she says, "Turn as you might, young child. I can see into your soul, and I see that there's good and there's listen. bad. <laughs> and um, you guys see those of you who are looking at Nihilus, um." Her gaze kind of intensifies slightly, and um, his face starts to melt. Oh, no. oh, my face! And it solidifies and it changes color. The the how would you describe the previous blue of Nihilus? Like would it like periwinkle or what? Oh, he was more of a green. Okay. Did I say he was blue? Oh, no, you can... I don't remember, to be honest no, with you. he's got, like, a like a jade-colored skin. Okay. Um, yeah, so Nihilus's face begins to melt, almost like mercury, and it begins to mix, and it turns from a green jade to a silvery uh, opaqueness, and as it solidifies, it, the, the shine and the reflection starts to... starts to... Uh, take place, and um, when all of you look at him, you um, see a <laughs> horrific appearance of yourself. M similar to, like, a funhouse mirror. Uh, is, is Nihilus to face a mirror now? <laughs> so, uh, Nihilus, uh, your feet also turn into hillocks. Uh, little pedestals, um, on top of which... They are like on pedestals of a high, like a horse, like a very tall horse. So you've got these big platforms. So there's a little mound on top of a horse, and your face is melted with you have now a ref reflective face. And I will explain what you see. Nihilus, when you look at someone else's face, uh, you only see the reflection of what you've become. And it is a hideous, essentially extends down past your face to your chest, um, just like a fuller, full head mask. Um, every head that you look at, it's just you're staring at what you now look like. And so now you have the condition, write this down, that you are face blind. So um, you're going to have disadvantage on perception checks uh, regarding, you know, things like looking for certain people, identity of humanoids. And uh, everything else is the same. Uh, you can still talk, although no one can see you talking. Uh, your, your movement is still the same, even though you're on these weird uh, platforms. So did my physical appearance actually change, or is this like an illusion? Uh, how would you like to determine that? You can touch your face. Like feeling myself. Yeah, it feels like over. a melted 
solid substance. You don't feel your norm normal face. Um, and uh, as this is happening, um, she says... There's good in you, Nihilus, but there is things that need work as well. And um, <laughs> I just like the, to imagine him giggling. Um, uh, she's serious through this whole thing. Her presence is, is very overwhelming. It's not an evil presence. It's a good presence. And it's different than the presence that you had felt when you entered the Dominion, uh, which was more of a gloomy, dark, kind of like heavy presence. And when she rolled uh, into town with her carnival, that lifted a bit. Uh, Prati, she turns to you, and she says, I hate to levy another curse upon a race that has been so unjustly cursed, but you too did not follow what? the <laughs> the rules of the Tuger Room, and I can see into your soul as well. And what you seek and what you desire should not be your main goal. The the while it is a admirable goal you can contribute to the goodness in this world without it. And um, her gaze intensifies intensifies again. And you see Prati's eyes, which are black, and kind of not totally forward-facing, but they're a crow. Uh, so kind of on the side, they kind of move forward, and then they expand into these bug eyes, multifaceted green bug eyes. Uh... There's no mechanical effect, Prati. You can see the same. But now Prati has these two fly-type eyes <laughs> on his head, green as jade. And um, she says to you, to everyone now, now that I've completed my task, I must go and... If you have any questions, Tyndall will answer those for you. And she goes, what a bitch. whoosh, and takes off. And uh, everyone was still working while all this was going. Um, yeah, so Tyndall walks up and goes, oh, yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's called the twisting uh, that's a rough one, especially for, I didn't get your name, and he's looking at you, Nihilus. I don't want to call you Mirror Face, but... Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Nihilus just, like, falls to the ground and, like, curls up in a fetal position. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> and he turns to the rest of you and he, um, basically he's very gregarious and he starts showing you around the camp that they're setting up and, um, ask any questions you may have while he's doing this. He takes you to one tent and, um, he, uh, says this is the tent of... Professor uh, Pakali, he is a most educated, the most educated man in the troop. Uh, and you see kind of as he's setting up his tent with the help of some of the other masked people, um, he uh, kind of has a crazed expression on his face. Um, he's wearing a tattered white lab coat um, and he's setting up these tiny colorful jars um, and when you look closer, you can see there's tiny little humanoid figures inside. And then Tyndall takes you around. He's still giving you the tour of the carnival. And he mentions, uh, as he's taking you to the next tent, he mentions that Professor Piccoli, uh, if you'd like to talk to him later, he may sell you one of those jars. Uh, you can talk to him uh, about that later. Uh, Wait, this... jars of humans? 
Uh, I don't know. I don't quite know what they are. You'd have to ask him. Quite creepy, if you ask me, but, uh, they do something. Uh, I don't know quite what. Uh, this is the tent of the... Tent and stage of the Crimson Rose. Uh, they are... A being that has danced for kings and has made them cry, for queens and has made them lust. Regardless of race and gender, she is the, they are the best uh, dancer you will ever see. Then, um, you see a wretched man crawling, <laughs> crawling out from a cart, uh, He's basically crawling towards you, debasing himself, and the lower half of his face <laughs> is green and oily, and a miniature face is protruding out of his mouth. He has no mouth, and there's an arm coming out of his chin, and he has his, um, his green, oily flesh. Uh, he's groaning and mimes, and he's at, it looks like he's miming for money. Uh as as he's uh, coming up to you, and uh, Tyndall says, yes, this is the imp. Uh, I don't know his name. He can't speak, but that is what he goes by. Uh, the twisting did a number on him. Uh, I'm not quite sure what Isolde saw in him, but nevertheless, feel free to give him a pittance if you wish. Otherwise, we will continue. Do any of you... Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, give him, like, I give him a silver. He's very uh, grateful and slinks back to um, where the masked people had thrown his luggage, essentially. Um, and they're not helping him set it up. Uh, then Tyndall takes you to another tent that's being set up. And um, most of these tents are going up real quick. So maybe uh, they're magically assisted. Um, the next tent, Tyndall says, This is the marvelous Madame Marvolo. She's, uh, she's quite the uh, seer, as it were. Uh, and she is peeking through the curtain of her tent, and um, you see cushions behind her, uh, and she's got feathers poking out from her covered head, um, and he goes, if you'd like to get your fortune told, she'll be here for you uh, after this, or you could do it right now. I'm still just going to give this tour as I was directed by Zolde. Uh, Oh, yes. Uh, this is the illuminated man. And you see a fully naked man covered in tattoos, green uh, shimmery tattoos. And uh, he's chained to a post. And Tyndall says, yes, this man... Uh, Isolde told us to t tie him to a post because he'll run away and... Um, he can be quite vicious. Uh, some of those tattoos, you know, I'm not quite sure, but I think at some point, one of the, and he points to the mass people and he says, the Skura, S-K-U-R-R-A, uh, the Skura have mentioned, written down that those tattoos became real. I don't quite know. I've seen some weird stuff, but I don't quite know if that's true or not. Uh, and what kind of images of tattoos are on his skin? Sure, you see, you see a, dr a lot of dragons. Uh, you see devils and traditional representations of devils and demons, uh, fiends in general. Um, it's, yeah, that's pretty much mostly it. Um, if you'd like to look closer, you can do that at your own peril. Um, and then behind another tent, uh, it's much bigger. It's safe to assume that this is Isolde's tent. You see a man who's 
not dissimilar to Nihilus's transformation. He's, but it's not a metal form. He looks very waxen, and he's peeking around this tent that's being sent up. And Tyndall says, "Oh yes, that is uh, Mister. Uh, <laughs> we just call him Mister, and he is uh, he's a curious one. Uh, just don't let him touch you." And he quickly moves on to uh the blade brothers who you had seen previously orson uh and he says yes uh orson these are the blade brothers you are familiar with them uh their masks all have uh blades it's they're made of blades uh and um yes they will put on a show the best uh swordsmen and and knife throwers throwers you'll ever see come by later if you'd like to see them uh and i think that's pretty much Ooh, yeah did i get did i say the vampires no i didn't nope uh it keeps going another he says uh this is the vampires uh just don't um I'll just say this. She eats with her mouth open. Be careful. Uh, and then, uh, also, you may see some Skura who uh, are lurking around, not doing much work. Uh, they are the sisters three, Leer, Pry, and Scream. They're harmless. Uh, so that's where he, that's the end of his tour. And um, if you'd like to ask him questions, you can do that, or you're free to do whatever you would like. Nihilus would like to ask a question. So you got up off the ground? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, who, who is these old, and what gives her the right? Oh, uh, that is a fantastic question. Uh, what was your name again? Did you... Did it's you... Nihilus. Oh, Nihilus. Uh, again, I am. I have a lot of sympathy for you. Uh, give me a second. Is that what's going to cure me? Sympathy? Uh, no, I'm not. That's a good question. I am not sure what will do that. Is that one of your questions, I assume? Well, you just answered it. Okay. Um, so Isolde is an angel. To put it bluntly, uh, we think there's a curse on her to walk the Plains of Dread, although this is a new plane, and we've never been here before. We've been to most of the Plains of Dread multiple times. This is a new plane. I'm not sure what's going on here, uh, other than hearing about the Strani playing company uh, but Isoldi essentially travels around and she collects, she, she found me and she gave me shelter and we made a carnival that um, essentially of people she collects and gives shelter to from the horrors that roam these realms. Uh, yes. Now, now uh, why is she beholden to this Strani playing company? Why is she doing their, their bidding? Oh, well, you'd have to ask her. I assume she wants something from them. There are some... Uh, she goes off on her own a lot and uh, seems to be looking for something. She never tells us exactly what she's looking for. Uh, but you, she, she is wouldn't do that... She hates doing that. She does it because she sees the true soul of every being, I think. Uh, although I haven't gotten a clear answer on that. Um, yeah, so uh, she will... Uh, they probably have something she wants. She has mentioned in anger the gentleman caller before that she uh, is looking for. Someone called the Gentleman, gentleman Caller. Gentleman Caller. Yeah. Someone she has sex with? Is that what that means? Oh, no. Uh, I think she wants to destroy him and smite him from the every realm there is. 
How do we get an audience with her? I would like to speak to her directly. She just came, she did this thing, and then she left. Yeah, uh, I assume she went back down to uh, to Dodrinsk, which is the, I think it's the capital of the Dominion to the north. Uh, I'm sure she, that's also where the Strani Playing Company is based. Uh, so she may be there, or you can wait for her to come back whenever that may be. Didn't she tell us that she was commanded to stay with the group, and now she just wanders off whenever she wants? I don't uh, understand. I don't know that she said she's commanded to stay with the group. She's commanded to stay within the Dread Realms. Hmm. It's a curse. Hmm. I don't like her. Some have said that, you know, she may be a fiend, but I just don't see it. Have you have you seen this twisting happening before? Uh, well, you've seen it. I just gave you a tour of some of the some of the uh, beings that have been twisted. She looked. Oh, she she made them. Oh, yeah. That was not she, the I original. She just found them. Uh, she found them, and then her gaze, she thinks it's honest and true and righteous to have one's internal compass, moral compass, displayed externally. I'm just paraphrasing. Those aren't her words. Who hurt her? Ooh, that is a good question. We're not quite sure, but, um... You know, she she's not in any of the upper planes, so uh, she must have done something. I okay, assume it... Find some of the things in the jars. So you want to go to <laughs> Professor? Okay. Yep. Um, and if you... if Do I wobble now? Does Nihilus wobble? Uh, a little bit, but it doesn't okay. affect your mechanical speed. Um, no, I just need a visual. Sure. Uh, the 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 long legged horse hooves the horse hooves of the statues that you're standing on are a little wider so it gives you some you know stability. Uh, those of you who want to go with Orson to Professor Piccoli's tent, you can. Otherwise, if you want to ask more questions of Tyndall, I'll get back to you. I'll pop back to you after we're done with Professor Piccoli. Um, can I go talk to the vamp for us? Yes, we can do that as well. Uh, do you want me to? Do you want me to just like? Do it separately, or well, I'll jump to you. I'll be like Prodi. Yeah. Um, um, Nihilus just split the party. I'd go to Ma marvelous Madam Marvola. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nihilus is gonna go with Orson, and he, as he's walking, he he turns to Tin Tyndall and says, "You're useless to me." <laughs> he walks. Doesn't he have yeah. faith blindness though? Uh, he, well, he was talking to him, yeah, so I would so assume that he'd be able to identify which. <laughs> yeah, he's face blind, so he only sees his, his ugly self now. But uh, hey, <laughs> so we'll start with Orson. <laughs> um, so the man, the old gentleman with the crazed expression and the uh, tattered lab coat um has finished setting up his his uh wares and he is um he sees you coming and he looks at you and he goes ah yes uh how can i help you are you interested in a punk in a in a punk what is a punk oh these pick and you see a sign it's very the calligraphy is very ornate but it is, uh, therefore, hard to read. Uh, it says pickled punks, and he says, yes, the pickled punks right here. Waves at these jars. You see these humanoids. Uh, if you'd like to buy one of them, they can give you a certain effect upon consumption. Hmm. How, how many jars am I seeing all around the display? You see, uh, of similar, like, he's got them lined up, so you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
you see seven uh, columns, and then they go back, and you would it's safe to assume that the ones behind the front ones are the similar uh, make. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Would you like to buy one, sir? I, yes, and what is in these other things? And he looks around. Uh, well, those are trinkets that I've collected. Uh, so let me get to my notes on the trinkets. So you see, like, candied floss in, in hoops on a hook. You see, uh, a toy spider that's got a little windy, uh, nub to it on top you see um make a perception check sure 17 you see a letter on his desk kind of it looks like a lab you're looking into behind him most mm -hmm. of his wares are these pickled punks um but on kind of a paper must have uh, been blown off or knocked off the table and kind of at the entrance of his tent, you see a letter and it says, uh, it says, please des desist all merriment in my domain, if you please. And it's Whoa. signed Lord Zarevich. All right. So, so um, what I'd like to do is... Uh, tell him I want one of I want one of everything. Go and get me one of everything. Oh and my! Did I take a? I I grab. Uh, I use Mage Hand to grab the letter and then snag it. Okay, make a sleight of hand check. Sure. A sleight of hand. Let's see. Uh, twelve. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, would you please desist from taking my letter? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was part of the package. Oh, no. Now, get me one of everything. Sure. Uh, I'm getting a little feedback on, uh, your speakers there, Ryan. Okay. Sure. Let me, let me adjust. How's that? Um, good. Yeah, I can't hear myself. Uh, so, I can hear myself a little bit. Uh, so, he says, well, and he's pointing to, from left to right, uh, he says, this one's 25 gold pieces, this one's 25 gold pieces. These two are 50, this one's 100, this one's 250, and this one's 500 gold you are, I must say, don't judge a book by its cover. How do you have, how have you, what is your business that you've come by so much money? I am a pig farmer and always, everyone always wants bacon. So it's very, very popular. Would you like some bacon? Do you have bacon in your pocket? I don't have bacon in my pocket, but I know where to buy bacon. Oh? I have bacon. Okay. Uh, yes, I might like some bacon. Uh, so which of these, um, punks, would you actually like them all, or what? Um, so, I think since I'm asking for just one of everything, well, I get a jar of punks, and then, um, basically just some knickknacks, uh, because I figured I also can... I also can use them as presents. Sure. And there's a like a big jar of weird stuff kind of to the side. And he says, oh, yeah, I mean, if you're going to buy one of each of these, keep in mind, each jar is one punk. So, uh, and the total here, Ryan, is 250, 500... A thousand gold for one jar of each. Okay. So after looking at that and looking at his wallet, it's like, okay, we're going to now bargain. 
Yes. Uh, make a persuasion check. Maybe for funsies, tell us what you would say to him. Like, first of all, oh, then for funsies, I would say, first of all, I would, I believe in investing in the pork belly market, which I am full of, I am full of pigs, so I know that all of these, and he's very bad at persuasion, so he's stumbling over his words, so I know that, that he's, uh, that he's not really good at it. Sure. And, um, sure. but it, it's basically a lot of bullshitting about, um, about, be, uh, about pork bellies and why you should invest in them. And by giving me some of your stuff, I consider that as investment. Could Nihilist help persuade? Uh, I thought you're still, did you go with I him? went with Ryan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you, that will give you advantage there, um, Orson. Cool. Okay, rolling advantage. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay, wow. Okay, wow. Uh, so what's happening <laughs> with your audio? This is what Prady sounds like with his bug eyes. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Not it's, persuasive no. at all. Your audio is very buggy. Right now, oh, okay. uh, Ryan, let me look. <laughs> Let's see. Seems to have gone away. Okay. Sure. We'll, we'll right. say it does. Um, what was your second roll? So I my first roll was a three. My second roll was also a three. Uh, so... He says, I'll tell you what, you seem like a good man, uh, but here, I will, uh, if you buy a, and he points to this jar, it's got some green liquid in it uh, that's coloring the punk inside of it. This is the 100 gold piece punk jar. And he says he'll throw one of the lesser priced um, punks in for free if you buy that one. Okay. So the total will be 100 is what I'm looking at? Yep. And so now you have a, uh unknown effect. Uh, he doesn't... He He's very coy about the effect, but he says something about the 100 gold one. He says... This one will make you light as the wind, or airy. I'm not quite sure. Sometimes the effect changes. And uh, so let's call them, you have a red, a blue, a purple, and a orange punk that are the lesser priced ones. Which one do you want? And he, if you would like me to go over the vague description he would give you, I can do that. Um, we'll stick with the colors for now. So red, blue, purple, orange. Um, Those are the... And, um, Go ahead. Um, so red, blue, purple, and orange. Um, I'll take a, a candy floss and then a toy spider. Because I think I, I have uses for those. Okay, well, he says those will be an extra five gold. That wasn't okay. part... Okay. <laughs> so, <you> <laughs> <laughs> so it's 105 gold. Yeah. Okay. So and which punk did you want? Or... Which punk did you want? Which color? Oh, uh, I'm going to go with the red. Okay. All right. He says, ah, oh, yes, this is a wise choice. This one will make you, and he looks at Nihilus, a bit full of yourself if I brewed it correctly. Uh, anyways, come back again once <laughs> I have more. Where's... And uh, uh, Nihilus wants to ask him a question. Sure. Uh, he says, uh, I'm not going to take that last part um, as an offense, but uh, Mr. Professor, I do have a question for you. I don't normally look like this. Do you know how to reverse this? You seem like a very smart man. Uh, I have no clue. No. Uh, this Isolde is an angel, I think, so... Although some say she might be a fiend. So I've heard. I'm guessing it's the latter. 
Sure. I'm done here. Okay. And he walks off. <laughs> Before you can do that, Professor did that to you. Okay. What? Oh, no, he did it. I did it first. <laughs> uh, Prodi. <laughs> who did you want to talk to? I wanted to talk to Vampires. Right. Right. I wanted to talk to Vampires, please. <laughs> I'm never printing out my notes again. Uh, okay. So, entering her tent or knocking, saying hello, as it were, what you, whatever you do with a tent. Um, she... <laughs> Flap. <laughs> sure. Uh, and you hear flapping in return, and she comes out, and you see a woman... Uh, wearing a mask, but she has leathery bat wings extending out of her shoulders. Um, and, uh, when you try to, what do you say to her? I say, hello. How, how's it hanging? Out loud or oh, in her head? In her head. Then I go, whoops. Um, and I just wave my, wave my, uh, my crow arm. Yeah, she's surprised by it, but you don't hear any response, and she shakes her head at you, and as you're prompting and prompting, like, trying to get a conversation out of her, uh, Tyndall comes up to you and says, Oh, yes, the Skura don't speak. Uh, that is part of their curse. They uh, cannot be compelled to speak, and they don't speak. So... Um, if you'd do like, they write? Some of them do, but it is at great peril. What I told you earlier caused one of them to disappear out of existence. Okay. Uh, but she... Uh, what Basically, if you're asking what happened to her, um, is that what you're curious about, Tyndall asks? Yeah. Um, well, she... I think she took off her mask one night, and the twisting takes effect if they take off their mask, so. Uh, hmm. And now she... I've wondered why she didn't ask Isolde for, you know, to remove the wings, but I think, you know, maybe it's a mark of shame that she wants to carry around. It's rather sad. Do they work? Can they? Can she fly? Oh yes! At night, she flies around gloriously. In the moonlight, it is a beautiful sight. Oh man! I wish I could go through the twisting. <laughs> this is Jake laughing, not uh, <laughs> Tyndall. Uh, you did go through the twisting, sir. All I had to show for these big bug eyes. Uh, maybe I'd you can some, learn can from it. Can I get some bat wings? Uh, okay, well, um, can I look around Vampiris' room or anything? Her uh, tent? As you make your move to try and go in her tent, she kind of looks at you, her eyes through the mask, and you make an insight check. <laughs> It's low. Let's see. 14. Pretty sure she doesn't want you to go in her tent. Uh, would you like to? Um. <laughs> Tyndall's going to like... If... <laughs> hey, hold on. So you, is, are you saying that or is, is Tyndall saying that? Uh... I'm saying that if you're making a move towards the tent, let me know. Uh, no, I just do whatever insight I can gain from yeah, her so that's, block, that's, blocking the flat. That's the insight. It's just like, don't go in my private space. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's it. I go rejoin the group. Okay. Who wanted to see Brian? Who did you want to talk to? That'd be me. Uh, Madame Marvolo. Okay. The Marvelous Madame Marvolo. Okay. 
All right. Uh, you, it's easy enough to find the tent. She's put up a sign, uh, on, on top of it that says exactly what Tyndall described. Upon entering the, the tent, you see the old woman, very frail and old. She's beckoning, uh, you further in, and there's cushions scattered, more organized now than it was before, cushions scattered on the floor. And she sits behind a dirty table covered in uh, weird-looking cards, almost maybe handmade, it looks like. Um, and she says, Let Madame Mavolo show you the veil and see the future. And I kind of look around with shifty eyes a little bit and sit down. And she goes... Oh, wise man. Uh, <coughs> and she starts coughing, and it's a very wheezy cough and disgusting at times. And she says, oh, yes. And she starts flipping over the cards, turning them back over, switching them around in a rotation, almost like a uh, that like street game where you're trying to pick where the card goes. Uh, and she keeps flipping them back over and goes, oh, yes, we're getting an idea now. The veil is opening and coughing in between her talking. And she says, uh, you will meet a tall and very handsome man one day. And he will have very bad breath. And I just wait. <laughs> Oh, yes, more. The veil is opening. <laughs> and she starts flipping around the cards more, looking at them. And there's just the same three cards. Keep in mind. Oh, there's there's just three. Okay. <laughs> and oh. She, and she goes, oh, oh, yes. Have you considered getting a dog? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking back. I'm just shaking my head slowly. Mm -hmm. Oh, one more, and that will be ten gold. And she looks at you. She's looking down at the cards before she starts messing with them, and she's looking kind of like over the top of her glasses, like waiting for you to, you know, yeah, I may have the ten gold type of thing. Do you do that? I don't react at all. I'm just watching her. Uh, I'm sure you're good for it. Uh, <laughs> oh, the veil! It's bright, it's blue, it's pink, it's green! It's beautiful. Those day and she says, those days when you rolled down the green hills, you should do that again and enjoy your time, what you have left in this life. It is a sad tale, but fate does not, we do not get to choose what the veil shows us. And I reach into my pouch and I pull out head gold and I just say, you, you need this more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk out of the tent. <laughs> Come back again if you want more of the veil. Nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> and she starts coughing in a coughing fit. <laughs> uh, anyone else wanted to see any of the other people I mentioned? Yeah, I'll, I'll go talk to the Blade Brothers. Me too. Okay. All right. Uh, you, talk, you can talk for me. <laughs> Tyndall. Tyndall's. Uh, oh, I, have, I have one question. Did we give the newcomers to our party like the Ophidian of messaging? Uh, do they do they have those? Or... They don't know what it is. Okay, so we haven't done. We haven't given them. We so we had these walkie talkies. I guess me and Nihilus can use them, but this is me Prati explaining it. Yeah, we got these like little uh, walkie this is like talkies. Like last things. night. They, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know we'll we'll see if we can get um, Sarah to like give you hers because it's really really useful when we're like kind of near each other but not like right next to each other to be able this, to talk to each other. So this what just what is just happening now was last night. Yeah, is that what you said? Okay, then Nihilus is gonna pipe in and say, uh, I mean, for now, I guess what we can do since Prady, you're telepathic, maybe you can give yours to someone else. Uh, 
because you're just invading our thoughts all the time anyway. Yeah, I mean, I'm not invading your thoughts. I, I speak to you. I'm not like reading your your mind. Um, but yeah, yeah, I totally. And he gives he gives his to um, uh, not Christmas. I'll get Ashwin. Sweet. Oh, so the, you chose in, that one. That was last night. Yeah. So Ashwin, he hands you this little tiny. Um, it's about the size of. It goes. It's a little snake. Uh, silvery snake metal and uh, Prati tells you to put it in your ear and as you do it wiggles around in your ear and forms perfectly not inside but just slightly outside almost like a hearing aid um, and I will add it's called the you might be able to add it to your character sheet right now um, it's called the Ophidian of Messaging O-P-H-I-D-I-A-N and if you go to your character sheet and you um, go to equipment and manage equipment, you may be able to do that. If not, if you can't do it right now, that's fine. I'll, I'll uh, walk you through it or do it later. Um, where were we? I, I have a question yeah. um, outside uh, about Prodi's tele, tele, telepathy. Yeah. Um, how... How does that work? If someone is maybe trying to communicate with you, um, are they able to like shout your name and you would know, or is it just that you go in there? So, um, as far as you know, the way Prati has described it is it's essentially like a conversation. He doesn't hear any of your thoughts. Um, oh. So he's basically just projecting his voice to you and it goes the same distance as a regular voice would. Um, and so like you don't, since you can talk, if you wanted to start a conversation with him, obviously you just, uh, use your voice. So we wouldn't be able to like talk shit about Ashwin in our heads. Uh, you could, um, if Prati like, wants to do that i mean you can't like force him <laughs> into a telepathic does that make sense but he would be able to hear my thoughts if he initiates yeah. like if if okay does that make sense yeah okay mm -hmm. um like if he were to go hey what do you think about ashwin telepathically then you could you know i hate her yeah okay sure <laughs> Jesus Christ. he doesn't hate her he doesn't um <laughs> So who, who, what was the next? We were talking to the Blade brothers. Oh, right. Uh, Tyndall's talking to them as well. And he's pointing at their tent footings, telling them to, uh, verbally telling, they're not talking. He's verbally telling them to anchor their tent uh, better. Um, what would you like to say? I want to, I'm talking to Ashwin and I'm just like, I'm like, you wonder why they're setting up a carnival in this decimated town where there's only two residents? Um, like, are they going to put on a carnival for two people? I don't really understand, like, what's happening. Well, we're here, too. And I assume they're here because of you guys. It's kind of your fault that they're here. Just a little bit. Well, that was just the... The Isolde. That wasn't... The whole the whole carnival doesn't have to be here here for her to curse us. It, maybe it's just a, a giant rouge. They're, I don't know. I'll ask them. Yeah, yeah. Ask ask uh, Tyndall. Hey Tyndall, I got I got a question for you. Yes. Oh, what? you're the most what? adorable here. thing I've seen on all the dread planes. Thank you. Um, why did you guys decide to have a carnival here of all places? Oh, well, we follow where we try to keep up with the soul day. If she wants the carnival move, she's kind of the, the ring master, so to speak. Uh, so her protection is what we follow her. That's why she, we follow her around. So, um, but she's not here anymore. Didn't yeah, she, say she just she, left? She goes for she goes and does whatever she does, and she'll return hopefully within the next um, day. But yeah, 
Um, hey, Ashwin. Usually she tells us to go somewhere. I, like, whisper for no reason telepathically, and I'm like, hey, ask, ask him if he knows of a guy named Alu. If he's seen him. Hey, hey, Tyndall. Yeah? Do you know some guy named Alu? Yeah, um, that rings a bell. Yes, uh, there was an old man selling his wares. Uh, he journeys on these roads. We've seen, we've been here for a short time, but we've seen him twice already. Um, he tries to sell us, like, knickknacks and such. His name is Obadiah. Anyways, uh, he had was cursing about some Alu character um, the first time we met him. Uh, and you can find Obadiah just on the main road here, continuing over to Glodepol, uh and then down to Dodrinsk. Uh, he's basically what... I don't think he... I don't even think... Yeah, I don't know what his deal is, but uh, he had mentioned Alu. Did he seem Did he... angry about him, or...? No, he was... Yes, I... Uh, sorry, he, he he seemed angry. Uh, something had happened. Um, not quite sure what, though. Uh, oh, I'm surprised they remembered that. So you... Th so you think he's into drinks? To drinks? To drinks? Uh, to drinks? Yeah. Uh, he's on the road somewhere. He might... Yeah, uh... If you go out, you know, just east, continuing out of town, along the way you were heading when you came into town, uh, you may run into him. Hmm. Hmm. I got another question for you, Tyndall. Yeah. So, as much as this is real fun to see my friends get turned into things, is there a way to fix that? I think Isolde would say... Make sure you're you're a better person. Essentially, she would say it in much more of an angelic and haughty, you know, oh look at me, I'm a celestial type of way. But uh, yeah, she would essentially say, change your insides; it'll be good for you. So, if they become better people, would it go away, or is that just like advice and they're stuck that way? Well, the twisting is a representation of of the person they are that that Isolde sees uh and however she sees it with her celestial eyes uh so if they were to truly change i'm sure it would change the nature of the twisting hmm. hey ashwin uh if there's nothing else you want to ask uh tyndall i think i'm gonna just hightail it and try to go find uh alu by yourself well, you can come with me, Ashwin, or I'm just going to... I'll go with this guy. He could be um, hostile. Sure. And um... I guess we haven't gotten... To... <laughs> Have we talked to the Blade the Blade Brothers yet? <laughs> no, I mean, well... you also know that they're, they're Skura, so they can't talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I want to give them something. The Blade Brothers? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to give them um, a hand axe. So Ashwin uh, like pulls out like two hand axes and gives it to them, one of each. So they look at you and they bow and take the hand axes, and they both um, essentially do a backflip and throw the hand axes behind their backs while they're in midair, and they clink together and and uh, ricochet off each other and hit one of the carts that's still um, that's still being set up, that stuff is still in it, and these two axes just go ding in the uh, in the wood of the cart. Ooh. And they bow and um, continue what they're doing. Hmm. All right, that was awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to know about this Viranal Dominion? <laughs> Tyndall says. 
Well, uh, since, since you're asking, yes. <laughs> what do you know? Sure. If you want to, you don't have to. I'm just, this is, um, he seems to be a broker of information. So, um, you, any of you can, you don't have to. Um, I would like to ask, what's with the mirrors in the cave and the writing and all that stuff? Oh, uh, from what I know of the Virinal, again, we travel the Dread Plains, but, uh, Virinal Dominion, uh, that's been there for a while, even before the Strani Acting Company took over and the Countess Kalina was pushed aside, usurped, uh, and essentially forced into the Acting Company. Uh, so those have been there. I assume Princess Kalina Di Dionysus uh, her family, the Dionysus family, set those up hundreds of years ago when the Erasure opened up the Hermit Kingdom to the greater outside world uh, as maybe like a um, form of protection. But remember, Isoldi was doing a favor for the acting company, so usually... I'd assume they do their own dirty work regarding the Tuker room uh, and what may come of people who do not abide by it. Hmm. So it could have been worse or it could have been better. Maybe the twisting wasn't so bad. Who knows what the freaking acting company would have done. By now I've walked up. Yeah, we heard we heard tell of disintegration rays and floating heads, so... They're testicles. Say, they just look like testicles. It's disgusting. They're floating. Oh, that's even worse. Testicles with arms sticking out that shoot. They are brutal. They're insane. Just weird. So, so this place is ruled over by a bunch of floating testicles? Is that what you're <laughs> telling me? Yeah. Might be the weirdest of the Dread Plains I've been to. That's pretty weird. Although I don't think... The f this is a full dread plane yet. I'm not quite sure. Uh... Wait, I guess Nihilus is here now. He's run up as well. Sure. Um, um, okay, so uh, the 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 person who runs the company is the one who decides these punishments. Who is that? Uh, I think that would be the director. Where is he? In, or she? Sorry to assume. Uh, usually they stay at the seat of power in the north, uh, Dedrinsk. But sometimes they do, as a re recruitment drive for the acting company, they go to various towns and put on plays. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they may, usually you can find them in Dedrinsk, or maybe they're in Glodepol, uh, yeah. Well, it sounds like to me we'll be making our way to Dedrinsk. What can you tell us about that city? I mean, it's the capital of the Dominion. Is it under lock and key? Is it a big place, small place? Will we stuck out like a sore, sore thumb, not being floating testicles ourselves? Uh, Yes. <laughs> Um, so the, the, um, the fog, have you seen the, the mists, uh, yet the fog or mists? The, there's been tales that it's been coming up the river there. Uh, anyways, it's pretty well situated over that city and can make you really tired, uh, real tired. So, um, they're doing something, I don't know if it's them that's doing something with the dark powers or whatnot, but anyways. So Ask there's me. a lot of fog in the city, can we just walk on into the city and we won't be harassed or uh, we gotta go through customs or another two court room or something like that? Usually the acting company, as long as you go see one of their shows, don't become, <laughs> uh, 
don't become particularly agitated, but make sure you go see a show as kind of like a sign of respect. I don't know. They don't have power in the circus area where Isolde is, but um, yeah. Noted. That's good information. Thank you kindly. Can you give us comp tickets? Oh, they're, they're you can just go. Oh. <laughs> okay. But if you're well, do, but if if they're doing one of their improv shows, they may call you on stage and please do not resist. Oh, it's improv. It can be. Mm. <laughs> and they're not very good, but don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> well, the circus looks mighty fun, but I don't know that we want to be sticking around here for many days waiting on the winds of an angel. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you folks, but I think we might be heading our way to Dodrensk. So how long? Lou you... just keeps on slipping through our fingers. We gotta just catch up to him. Also, I kind of exactly my thinking. I want to change back before we travel? You want? I don't. I, I just, it's not really affecting me. It's not. I mean, I'm not as like dashing as I used to be. But he doesn't like being ugly. But um, what I mean, is he you, does it... Huh? You could join the circus. It, it sounds like. It sounds like <laughs> that's how all of them started. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the only bad thing really that happened to me is my perception, and I don't really care for looking at other people anyway. Um, so uh, we can uh, we can continue because it sounds like we need to talk to these upper people anyway, or I just need to change as a person. Uh, so, <laughs> how long do you guys I think? think the last how, yeah. How long do you guys think you stayed in uh, Priets where the carnival stopped? Like how many hours? Probably just a couple yeah. while we each went and yeah. saw each of our things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, like a couple, couple hours. hours. All right. I'm just saying. I would just say an hour. Yeah. So it's still morning. Uh, as far as you know, the dusk, the perpetual dusk of. Still getting that feedback. Let me turn your volume down. Uh, okay. Um, so, wow, I'm still getting, who am I getting? Is it Ryan I'm still getting feedback from? I'm sorry, guys. It's just very distracting. So, are you still getting feedback right now? Uh, let me keep talking. Yes, I am. You are. Okay. It's an echo more than a feedback. Yeah, feedback is the wrong term. It's just like I can hear myself talking delayed, and it's okay. like a... It's like my own little dread plane of hearing myself. <laughs> okay, like I think... So I, how about that? Uh, let me talk. That's better. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I'll try to do, like, next time, I'll try to find, like, headphones and that will back on. Cool. That should work. Uh, where were we? You guys are in for like an hour. You head outside. Priets, you're heading east on... Uh, let me look at the road. Thornbolt Highway uh, towards Glodopol. So to get to Dudrinsk, you go east to Glodopol. And then from Glodopol, the, the uh, road becomes uh, Kharkov. Road and that heads into Dodrensk and it follows the river there. Uh, and um, pretty quickly outside the road, you come upon. Oh, let me roll. Just make sure that doesn't happen. Are you good there? Um, you see a self -prop propelled uh, cart. Uh, where's my handout? Um, there's nothing pulling it. It seems to be going by itself. Walking next to it is a old man, a very old man, older than Professor Piccoli. Um, and, uh, he approaches you guys with a very wide smile on his face. And as, uh, as you approach and he says something, his whole cart 
unfurls like a Jacob's Ladder toy. Do you guys remember? Do you guys know what those are? Jacob's Ladder toys. They're like connected blocks of wood. Um, anyways, so essentially it just unfurls like a yo-yo the parts of the cart uh, into a little storefront. Um, and, he, and it says right on the front when this is happening, it says Semple Station of Stupendous and it's curiosities and he's added kind of like a hand drawn with shitty paint s so it's simple station of stupendous curiosities because he maybe he likes alliter alliteration a lot uh and he approaches you and he, he says oh welcome welcome hello travelers i can offer you wares if you'd like it who are you Oh, my name is Obadiah Semple. Uh, oh. Obadiah Semple. And We've been looking for you. May I ask why? Yeah, we have. <laughs> I've been looking for him. <laughs> we, we've heard that you've um, potentially met a fellow named Alu. Uh, he's, yeah, he's distracted while you're saying this as the cart continues to finish its unfurling and he starts banging on with his cane. He's got like a cane stick type of thing. He starts banging on the side of this cart, which has like windows of different styles. Part of the cart is burnt. Like it might've been on fire at some point in the past. And, uh, the windows have iron. Some of the windows have iron bars on them and he yells in there and he goes, Annie, Annie, the cart's acting up again. Uh, just, I'm sorry, uh, what was your name? And he looks at you, Ashwin. Oh, hi, I'm Ashwin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry I get distracted sometimes. This damn cart is, doesn't do what it's supposed to. It's okay. It happens all the time. But back to Alu. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 Alu, that f f uh, fucker. I don't say the F word a lot. <laughs> But he is a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> you can't trust a, a man like that who tries to steal from your cart. He, and he starts pointing at all these pockets and little pouches that are around the cart. He, says, he tried to reach into those. He thinks I wouldn't have had it ready for f fools like him. Bastard, I'm still mad at that. And he, and he turns back and he goes, oh, I, I know, sweetie. I just get riled up when these these charlatans try to steal from us. This is our business, sweetie. I know. I just, okay, I'll calm down. I know. And uh, and he turns back to you. I better introduce my wife. Uh, it would be rude if I wouldn't. And she'd give me a look. So let me introduce my wife. And... Uh, <laughs> Out of the back of the cart, you guys are kind of in the front. You see a 10 by 10 foot gelatinous cube uh, come out of the back of the cart and approach. He says, this is my the love of my life, Annie. Oh, she's such a sweetheart. Uh, and he pats the gelatinous cube and his hand kind of goes in for a second and uh, pulls it out and he just lightly wipes the residue of the ooze off of him. He goes, oh, yeah, she saved my life, sweet Annie. Oh, anyways, what, uh, Alu again? What did you want? Or did you want to buy something? I mean, we could do, we could do both. Um, uh, but, uh, did, which way did he go? What the hell happened to your eyes? <laughs> he says to, uh, Prodi. Uh... Can one of you guys just explain that I'm just, I'm apparently not true to myself and I need to work on my character and I yeah, was cursed, so cursed Nihil by this all day. <laughs> Nihilist just says, ah, some bitch thinks she's better than us and Holy she shit! Just cursed us. Ugly face over here. She thinks, <laughs> can you put a bag over it? just go around <laughs> cursing people uh, because sweetie, they don't Annie, live up to her standards. Annie, go get a bag. And uh, and he goes and he goes. Oh, never mind. There's one. You have one already, sweetie. And he reaches in inside of Annie, and there's like a, a wasted away burlap sack 
Um, oh. He pulls it out. And he goes, oh. oh, sweetie, this won't do. Uh, we might have another one. Uh, actually, let me just do this. And he casts mending on it, and it comes back together. Kind of good. He goes, uh, here, this is for you. Free of charge by uh, Sepple Station slaps. of Stupendous Curiosities. <laughs> Nihilus slaps it out of his hand. <laughs> Uh, now, Nihilus, I, I don't know that you should be uh, going spurning those kinds of gifts. You uh, could really <laughs> use that bag over your head. It's mighty fearsome what you look like now. All of you see, like, the ugliest representation of yourselves when you look at him. So right. I don't know if any of you are, like, actually looking at his head, but... I'm I'm looking, but just, like, averting, just because I don't want to look at it. Like, yeah, you're kind of you like... Look, you look bad. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of look in the direction, but just off to the side. <laughs> sure. Uh, That's fine. If you rather, instead of a bag, we can get you a cloth to tie around your face. Just something that's got to... No, no. You know what? You guys will all just have to live with it. Oh, he's never going to... He's always going to look like this. <laughs> You've... Jesus Christ, you're a mean one. You make your friends look at you like that just because you... Holy shit. You are fucking a gelatinous <laughs> cube. Who are you to judge Sir, me? our sexual practices are none of your business. Whoa, whoa, we are not talking about where you're sticking anything into a gelatinous cube now. This is my Probably wife. Just... Probably <laughs> just starts pointing at his wares and starts being like... <laughs> This kid talk about your wares. What do you think she? Uh, so this is like, some bitch did it, and. Uh, well, you might be familiar with the carnival and the. And the I ran into them. The yeah, uh, usually that weird shit that they got going on is usually reserved for those in the carnival. Uh, it's old day. Uh, oh, there you go. We got two day. not in the carnival. Okay, well, uh, what do you, uh, isn't it something to do, like, she sees, she's supposed to be an angel or some bullshit, she's supposed no. to see, mm -hmm. uh, like, your true self, maybe it's like, nope. telling you mm -hmm. something to get it's off your high horse, mm -hmm. and he's nope. looking it's at your, rumor. your feet. It's a rumor started by probably her, she's a fiend, it's clear. And he turns to Parati, what do you think she meant by you giving you green bug eyes? Probably just, just shrugs your shoulders, trying to figure it out, man. Maybe it's she like she was jealous. She was jealous of his beautiful black hole of the eyes that he had. Maybe she thinks, um, she thinks uh, he telepathically starts talking to Obadiah, and he just says he, she, his old dad thinks that I might be focused on the wrong thing. Do you know what the color of green or the color of envy is? And he does make that mistake. The cut. He's asking you, Prodi. Oh. What's the color of envy? Green. Yes, I gave it away. Why did it take you so goddamn long to say it? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh... Prodi just says like. Hey, do you? He shows him his uh, his rod, his regular rod, and he's just like, "Do you have any? Do you know anything about a rod of seven parts? Like, kind of looking for pieces of it." Oh, a magic man! Hear that, Annie? Got a magic man here. Uh, excuse me, not man, uh, Kenku. Uh, and he says, "Why, yes, you are in luck." My young former Kenku, I guess you're still Kenku with just bug eyes. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's pretty dis just disturbing. Uh, I hear I sell the Almanac Arcana. I'm sure you've heard of it. None of you have heard Ooh, of it. None of you uh, have yeah. heard of it. Uh, no. and, he, and he goes. Well, I'm sure you've heard of it because I send my updates to the Aspel Arcana regularly about the magic items I find, the trinkets, the baubles. And just a reminder on the lore here, uh, when the erasure happened, mundane items got imbued with magical effects and... Uh, 
a essentially a intercontinental uh, faction was created that controls all the baubles and because some of them can be real powerful and if they didn't form an inter international intercontinental committee or faction then there would be like an arms race with these baubles because you can some of them if you identify them and there's a wish spell in this iron then that's pretty good um so that's the Aspel Arcana uh, that he's referring to. And uh, he goes, yes, I send it regularly to them. And anyways, he pulls out, I have a copy I print myself. Would you like to buy one? They're five gold each. I'd like to buy one. Okay. I will also buy one. Okay. Two takers. You hear that, Annie? We're living on the, we're living on the ram, whatever the... What's that phrase, Annie? I don't know what it's... <laughs> no, that's not it. You're... Lamb? The lamb? Maybe. Annie... Not a good thing. Okay. I'll trust you. <laughs> not a good thing. All right. It's really... You know... You're as old as me. Sometimes these sayings change, and who the fuck knows what happens. Uh... All right, so and then very very late after uh, all this has happened, Nihilus remembers and says, "More like the asshole Arcana." Then he looks at Prati. <laughs> Sir, that is an organization I've been a member of for hundreds of years. Let's just how say old, your negotiating position you? has been. Hurt. Uh, I am pretty old. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, Annie, how old am I? Annie? Annie, I will sell them something, okay? I promise. But I did just tell me... All right, she doesn't know. Uh, I'm pretty freaking old. Uh, I feel like I've been in this fucking place forever. But anyways... Uh, to, to, to answer your question, anyways, the arcane, uh, the almanac arcana is what it's on my notes. Uh, basically it's a, uh, almanac of all the things he's find and like he does research on them and he says what they might be, um, things he finds in the world, baubles and such. Uh, so yeah, um, I can tell you what some of the do you have any baubles yes i do uh definitely want to know what baubles you have sure thank you for asking uh one second let me pull up that note god i can't even look over that direction he's so ugly Prati, Prati telepathically starts talking with Annie. And he's just like, <laughs> you, he's like, how the fuck do you deal with this guy? <laughs> you hear nothing. <laughs> Annie, Annie, are you, are you in there? Annie, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> you be quiet over there. I can't even hear your lips moving. Uh, uh, he says, um, if it's not clear by now, he's pretty off his rocker. Um, okay. So he's got, I've got, oh, I've got, uh, this hat and he pulls down a hat, uh, that, um, changes color as he's pulling it down. Um, to match his clothes. Uh, and then he pulls down a tooth. A pretty big tooth, like a six inch. Uh, it doesn't look like a fang. It looks like a, um, uh, I don't know the names of teeth very well. A plant eater tooth, so flat. Uh, a tooth. Like a molar? A canine 
No, a flat what? one. Molar. Oh, a molar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, what? Sure. Uh, and um, this one, well, uh, this bobble will protect you from poison. Uh, this puppy's four hundred gold. Uh, Ooh. Wow. Uh, we've got a uh, uh, this elven dagger that probably looked good once it's broken and uh, just shattered. And this this will cast light. Uh, this is a I've got a sale on this. It's fifty gold. Uh. Do you want to? What What's your price range? Oh, I just I just want to see. I mean, is your inventory too long to list, or I just want to hear which bobbles you have. And then, so far, one has not strike my fancy. I have a lapel pin uh, that has this flag, blue, white, blue and white striped flag. Well, I don't know why I'm describing it. I'm showing it to you. Uh, and there's a spear in it. I'm still describing it. Don't know why I'm doing it. <laughs> Anyways, it uh, will ca ca spare the dying, uh, and this puppy's a hundred gold. Uh, I can do that on my own. I don't. We don't need it. No. Jesus. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um. Oh, uh, this little paper crane can fly on its own. Enchanted it myself, and he pulls out this paper crane that goes floop, 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 Harry Potter style. Do you have anything that's not junk? How much is the uh, paper crane? <laughs> oh, the paper crane is uh, 25 gold. I should have, you know, maybe you should use a burlap sack to, like, quiet him, but... Maybe maybe you should shut up. <laughs> Annie... How about, uh, about 20 gold for that, Obadiah? What is... So the crane is just a... It just a fly paper crane? Yeah. It doesn't do anything else? Okay. As far as I he's got, telling I, you. I can think of some uses for it. <laughs> uh, and he I kind of I kind of wanted the dagger with the light. Yeah, so and he said that was 50 gold because it was on sale, right? Yes. So that's a bobble that you can cast light once and then that broken dagger, it's an elven dagger, it's broken. Won't really function as a dagger, but it has that property that you can cast light with it once. And so, 50 gold. Um, I will pay 50 gold. Uh, Crispin, if you want to negotiate, um, do. roll persuasion. And if you can, give me some RP with that. I say it's a, it's a really nice paper crane. I just you said you enchanted it yourself and... A lot of these baubles from the erasure, so I just don't feel like it's worth quite as much as these other baubles, if you don't mind me saying. Um, and I rolled a four. <laughs> <laughs> and he squints at you. His glasses are kind of on the edge of his nose. And he says, Well, my Annie thinks you're handsome, so it's a fucking deal. Wow. <laughs> Perfect. So twenty and, gold it is for the crane, and I. How about two extra gold, and you go ahead and tell us uh, a little bit more about Alu and your running with him. Oh, he, well, yeah, he. Uh, by the way, when he said Annie is finds you handsome, the gelatinous cube just kind of shivered when he said that. Um, uh, <laughs> so. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, I'll take the two gold. Basically, uh, part of it's, it kind of looked like your friend here, part of him was, like, disfigured, uh, almost. Uh, it's so guys a little bit, like, almost like he was melted. But, uh, yeah, so um, he basically describes the description you were given about Alu. Um, the the part of him that's not disfigured, he gives that description. It matches what you were given. Um, uh, he says, "Yeah, he just came in here and he's. Oh, I don't know what happened. He was just acting crazy, and I thought he was gonna buy something, and just started reaching into these bags. You just can't do that. There's, anyways, he doesn't have an arm now. So keep an eye on that." 
if you're still looking for him. His arm was lost because he stuck his arm in one of my wear bags. Oh. Do you know where he went? No. Which direction, maybe? Uh, no. Does Does Sharon know what's her name? Carol? Cheryl? I'm just going to assume it was a result of this twisting thing here that I can't understand you not getting what my is wife's her name, name what is your right. Wife's name? Annie. Annie. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Annie. Did she know where he went? Let me let me see. Annie, Ask her, Annie, please. Su sweet Annie, despite this man's rude disposition, please. Uh, you, do you remember which way Alu went? Pretty. Probably telepathically talks to Nihilus. He's just like, I tried to connect with her telepathically and there was nothing there. <laughs> and uh, he goes, well, it looked like he was heading to Mostashar. That uh, M-O-S-T apostrophe E-S-H apostrophe S-H-A-R. Yes, that's the shard, the crystal capital, the thing that popped up, kind of that I've been told popped up recently. The tower to the to the southeast. Um, he was heading there. Uh, something about finding what's going on with the shipments of crystals and the uh, the continued ex uh, expanse of the shard mind contingency cool uh nihilus turns to the rest of the group and says okay so we have two options here we can go to drinsk and kick his ass or we can go to most tashar and find uh alu i want to go to most tashar oh by the way annie reminds me uh most tashar is uh you know, it's a crystal tower floating in the sky, so you can't climb there. Can any of you fly or have any magic? Can't say I fly. Well, you're going to need to find someone that can get you there. Uh, how how high is it? Oh, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, but it's probably a thousand feet above, you know, the valley floor here, so... Um, who knows? Could could be fifteen hundred. Hmm. Well, is there any civilization around this tower? Is it just a floating tower, and that's all that's around? In the I've heard it's just the, it, it's in the mountain range to the southeast. It's just on the uh, you know the mountain range, the Viranol mountain range that circles this dominion. It's just in the mountain range uh, to the southeast. Uh, it's a spire. Fucking, uh, I, uh, I don't remember. What was I going to say? I had something else to say. Annie, what was I going to say? Uh, wait. Nope, don't got it. Do you know where we can find, like, an airship or anything like that, maybe? Uh, the only person rich enough with an airship is Felix Tricknips, and he keeps that wherever he keeps it. Uh... He used to come here. I've, on my travels, I've seen his airship float over. That was a long time ago. He hasn't been here in a while for some reason. Uh, you know, it's a fancy. And you guys have seen his make of airships. It's similar to. It's a similar style to the arcane train you've taken. Um, he's trying to make airships take off uh, in the in Enver. And Exoros as a whole, it's very expensive, as you can imagine, to uh, make that a thing. Uh, so currently um, he has his own airship, uh, but go ahead. I was going to ask, um, since this is a job by Trick Nips's person, his employee... Would we be able to contact that employee and try to arrange for us to get an airship to to do this? You don't know. You don't know how the communication is. You have a lot more information as to what the Viranol Dominion has become and what it's becoming. So far, um, you found out that there's like a shard mind 
from various sources the shard mine contingent uh, of uh, and you've heard and it's similar to like what you heard them talking about in Serenity Springs with the Crystal Troll um, and then you've heard of the Strani Acting Company who's doing a different thing so you have these two and you heard uh, Obadiah mention something about the expansion of the Crystal uh, um, whoa, let me look at my notes I want to give you the perfect name for it, okay? So we would be able to travel through the shard mines to get to uh, most of shard, or well, the shard mine are are beings of crystal, oh. psionic energy. <laughs> oh, then not a place, okay? No, most of the shards a place, uh, but the crystals that are in this land and in the mountains that Felix has used. For various purposes, uh, well, it's it's still there, and some of it's come alive and formed into being. So, uh, make a. Hmm, I don't think it'd be from Nihilus, but someone make a persuasion. Some sort of charisma check with advantage since you're all there, and I'm not going to have you all roll for. Her. I have a plus six in persuasion. I'm not going to allow oh, wow. you to do it because of your your interaction, <laughs> but. Um... I have a 23, but I used intimidation. Oh my god! <laughs> Such a cute being can become so fierce so quickly! And then he hops behind Annie. And she doesn't do anything. She's just a, a gelatinous cube. Uh, Annie, protect me! And he starts to go inside of her, like, <laughs> to, to get protection. Oh. And you don't see, like, any effects happening that you can tell. Uh, he starts to go in, and then when you... I assume you don't attack him. Uh, he comes back out, and he peeks around. He goes, you could have... My God, I'm an old man. You could have just asked me. Oh. Oh. Always asking. Well, that's true. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, information dump. Um, he says, uh, wait, what was the question? I'm serious. <laughs> Where did you want to know? You just asked us to do persuasion. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah. we knew what we were asking. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I got it. Oh, there's a reason I highlighted it on my screen. Um, there we go. When you play these crazy ass memory fucked characters, sometimes it can get to you. Um, so basically, he says, I've heard something. About them trying to open something called the Living Gate. I don't know what that is, but, uh, fucking, I'm old and I've heard a lot of shit. And, uh, you know, I'm a... What was it called? The Sunken Gates? Jesus Christ, the Living Gates. Oh, li <laughs> Living Gate. That was Richard asking... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. Uh, um, what was the, oh, do you guys want to buy anything else? Any other baubles? No. Are there, are there any other baubles oh. you have? Of course. All of these are bags of holding and haversacks. They're full of shit. Are any of your baubles wishing baubles? Yes. Are any of your bags can, of holding for sale? Can I, can I wish away this? Uh, you if you want to buy a wish thing from me, you certainly can try. How much? Uh, fifty thousand gold. <sighs> <laughs> That's a deal. I would like to go now. Uh, who was I? I was gonna ask someone something. <laughs> I think Crispin wanted to know about the bag of holding. Oh, Crispin! I wanted to know about the bag of holding. Crispy, uh, I uh, I found a. Uh... <clears throat> well, my friends call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
started. <laughs> All of you make a note on your notes. <laughs> crispy. Um, crispy. Uh, uh, so, Ashwin, you have a bag of holding already, don't you? Yes. Okay, so would he... Would you have ever, like, said that in the previous few nights um, or traveling, like... No? Absolutely not. Okay. And would you say it to him now that he's asking for, asking uh, Obadiah? Okay. I'll just keep quiet. Okay. Um, ah, <laughs> yeah. I can, uh, let's see. And he starts putting his arms into these bags and, oh, that, that one's got stuff in it. Ah. And he's gone through like 12 of them and he goes back into the back of the cart. He's got, I think this, this is one of them. Uh, this will be, fuck, how much a bag of holding? Let me look. How much a damn bags of holding? <laughs> Looking at my price list. Let's find it, Jake. I'm sorry I don't have this memorized. Two copper. For shame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two copper sounds great. I'll take it for one copper. You're going to negotiate him down. <laughs> I'm going to Google search it. I'm going to Google search it for that. Hold on. He's going to search his wife? He's going to... You'd like to see no. that, wouldn't you, farmer boy? We, we've we already no, seen him go in inside his her wife. He's definitely been in her. It and it's as gross. exciting as I thought it would be. <laughs> Jesus, I, I love imagining Nihilus saying this with just the funhouse fun house <laughs> mirror face uh, that he has. I don't know. She's kind of a square. Woo! Mm. <laughs> uh, by the way, that reminds me... Um, I forgot to tell the new players here. There are, there's player inspiration that you can give to other players, one per game, per episode. Don't abuse it. Like, hey, everyone, let's each give each other a player inspiration so we can cheese this fight because bad things will happen if you do that. Um, but so like if somebody, it's meant to encourage role playing and if somebody makes you laugh from a something like that, uh, you can give it to them and that will be a D6 of inspiration you you can give to them it will expire at the end of the episode and then the next episode you have one to give again um dm inspiration lasts though uh through episodes you can only carry one of those um okay okay here it is okay okay I don't like that price. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Do we still have that bag on the ground somewhere? Uh, the one that he tried to get Nihilus to put on? Yeah. Yep, it's on the ground. We're just gonna, we're gonna keep that for later. Okay. Um, so he says to you, uh, Crispy, come take a look at this puppy over here and he um he uh pushes aside a clockwork puppy and pulls up a bag and uh it's like a patchwork bag uh and it has like aspel arcana patches like advertisement marketing all over it and he's like this is the cheapest do you want cheap or do you want Probably cheaper would be better. I'm not exactly rolling in coins right now. I want to thank you for letting... And he says under his breath, I want to thank you for letting me call you Crispy. Uh, I, I took a chance. <laughs> and uh, you... you <laughs> not a problem, OB. My pleasure. You you rolled with the punches as I will roll with that one. Uh, so I'm going to give you a deal here. It's going to be 140 gold for this bag of holding. 140 gold. I... Uh... It's a mighty fine deal. I see there's I'll be doing some advertising for the Aspelargana. So why don't we knock it down to 125? Make a persuasion check. He doesn't say out loud, but sometimes. <laughs> Jesus 
Christ. Five. <laughs> Crispy? <laughs> I don't... I don't have a bobble here to help your negotiating. I wish I did, because I like you, quite honestly. So, I'm going to go down to 135, just because I like you, and because my Annie likes you. And, uh... Gross. If uh, I see you giving any eyes to her, it'll be a different story. You catch my drift. Fair Ew. enough. Uh, 135 it is. Okay, so and Mark... I'll take that, that, that patchwork bag of holding. So it's, like, really you know, fucked up, and it works perfectly, though. There's nothing that you can tell is going to be wrong with it, but uh, yeah. Cool. Um, it's just a shit ton of varying uh, designed Aspel Arcana advertisement patches. Uh, okay, so uh, who else? I also wanted the bag of holding. Jesus! I Let me look! <laughs> Why didn't you tell me when I was looking? I did, but Crispin asked first, so that's why I had him. All right. Let me look. Oh, these old bones ache like you wouldn't believe. And he starts going through shit, and, like, one of them, he, he picks up a boot, and it accidentally, like, sets it off, and a light explosion, kind of, just goes whoosh, flashes, uh, and he goes, oops, uh, well, that bobble's ruined. Do you want a boot? Uh, and he eventually, uh, finds a bag, and it's pretty, looks like a new one. Um, it was on a lower shelf, kind of tucked away in the back. He's like, I like to rotate my bags, put the older ones in, out back, and, and let them get worn on. And then once they're old enough, I, like, the one I just sold i bring him inside and throw him somewhere and he's really in charge of the organization here but here's the bag and it's like a really nice leather bag uh bag of holding this puppy this is made out of the finest pig skin you can imagine in the world pig skin and he and he lets you feel it and you're uh. definitely sure it's pig skin uh and it's very mm -hmm. fine uh mm -hmm. Whether it's the finest you've ever seen is up to you, but it's very fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, it's a bag of holding. It's very nice. Looks not very used. He says it's 535 gold pieces. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, no. That's a, that's a little much. I just want something to buy a bag. Ching. I fucking love that Ashwin is just not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I don't know what to do. Huh. Well, I guess I could, um, I guess I, do you want one of these, do you want one of these on the, some of these used ones on the outside of the cart? That's fine. I'm, if they were used, I don't care what's in it. Well, I'm not going to give you what's in it. I'm going to empty it out. Well, you can empty it out and I could take it used. Okay, and he um, pulls one off the uh, the side of the cart, and he turns it inside out, and all the contents flood into Annie, and just kind of float Ew. there. And it, and um, uh, Obadiah says, "Sweetheart, you know, make sure to put these back in the cart pretty quickly here. You know what you can do to." I didn't mean anything by it, Annie. Just I'm. Please put it. All right, sweetie, I'm just going to shut up. I'm not getting anywhere. And he goes back to you with the emptied bag. And it's a pretty roughed up bag. Um, mm -hmm. There is a hole uh, in one of... So it might have been a haversack at one point. There's like an extra pocket. There's a hole in one of the pockets. But now the main compartment in the middle is a bag of holding. Uh, this is a bag of holding. It's worn. It was on the side. You just saw everything. I'm narrating exactly what you saw. Uh, how about, uh, 2.30? How about we go lower? It has a little hole in it, and, you know, bags of holding should only have one hole, not two. They don't want anything falling out of it. Well, I did price uh, for that. You want to make a persuasion check or intimidation <laughs> I, check? I will, I will make a, let's see, 
What am I better at? Uh, I will make a... Oh, yeah, I'll make a persuasion check. Here we go. And... Seriously? Anytime I roll a persuasion... Anytime I roll a <laughs> negotiation, it's always a three. So it would be a seven. Again, uh, you, this group needs better negotiation skills, and I don't have a bobble for it, but, uh... You know what? I don't need it right now. Thank you for, check <laughs> Thank you for checking. And then I look over at Annie to see if any interesting contents were dumped into her. Uh, yeah, there is a, um... There is... Do, 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 pull up the screen. There's a gemstone that's very dark purple, almost black, that has... You're not sure if it's the the translucent yet murky ooze that's causing it to kind of swirl, the gem color to kind of swirl. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is a, uh, a, a half of a skull of a vampire, huge fangs. There's um, a uh, couple belt buckles pretty big ones some of them ornate with uh gems in them um and a uh there's a walking cane with a the face of uh a gnome on it it's pretty worn but uh looks like a gnome uh let's see Oh, there's like a map of uh, the Sword Coast uh, in the <laughs> in the ooze. So um, we're not anywhere near the Sword Coast, are we? Yeah, we're on a different planet. <laughs> <laughs> Does uh, can I ask a question? Are you done, uh, Orson? Do yeah, you want any of that stuff? No, you can. You can look, Prodigy. Does Does Obadiah have any uh, armor? Can, are we going to beat him up? I would like that. He, uh... No, no, no. I'm saying, does he have any armor to sell? Not to oh. he... <laughs> I thought you wow. meant wearing. Wow, <laughs> we're just on two different uh, planes. <laughs> he, uh... Can I shank him? <laughs> he, um... what's, his, what's Obadiah's <laughs> worst weakness? <laughs> uh, he goes back into the His cart. Wife. His wife. At this point. <laughs> uh, he goes back into the cart and he comes back with some armor. He's got one of every armor you could want. Uh, he even says, "I've got something special back there." If you, I don't. I do you would I you don't wear some... plate mail, do you? No, okay. I just want some medium medium armor if that's okay. Is there something on the medium range that's not going to slow me down, but give me a little extra armor class? Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to stop dicking around with the internet. So, Christy, uh, you seem very interested in that bag. Why? Well, it's, uh, I got a lot of stuff carting around, and you've seen my bag before. It's bulging. There's a ton of stuff in it. Um, I, I carry around quite a few things, so I just I just wanted something that would make it a little lighter for me and uh, a little more convenient if I find anything else along my trip. I get that. I get. That. Are you okay with all the patches and whatnots on it? Well, I don't know nothing about no uh, Aspel Arcana, so it don't it don't make no difference to me. Though it seems like a couple of us uh, might take offense to uh, to this group. Namely, Nihilus. <laughs> he probably won't be too happy. Probably not, but, uh, well, a bag's a bag. I figure it works for me. Uh, and I'm start I'm already starting to transfer. You see me putting, like, a, a, a carpenter's hand axe in, a, a, a small bow saw, just, like, one thing after another. There's a bunch of, like, paints and paint brushes I'm shoving in there. It's just, it's a lot of stuff. Okay, uh, as Ashwin is just, like, talking to you, you see her like, grab a small bag on herself and she's just, like, holding it, kind of taunting you a little bit with it. It's like, oh, okay, it's, it's a 
nice it's bag. A, it's a nice bag. I mean, uh, about that size bag. I mean, what are you keeping that? A, a, a thimble? And, and then it's probably oh, full, ain't it? You, you want to know what's inside this bag? Well, sure. What does a what does a mouse carry around? I've, I've been dying to know while we've been traveling. Cheese, so, uh, right? It has, to, it has to be cheese. There's always cheese, but no. She opens it, and um, a longbow comes out. Well, I uh, <laughs> can't say. There's more weapons, ones I can't, you know, carry on myself. Sure, like I got sure. a crossbow and a blow a blow dart in here, and a bunch of other stuff. And I really slowly unsling my longbow from my back and start sliding <laughs> it into my bag. And I'm like, that's mighty fascinating. <laughs> you, so, you know how to use all those. Oh, of course. Huh. They teach well, you like that. Like I said, I, I never met a mouse before that could talk. And I sure as hell never met a mouse that could fight. I sure as hell never met a mouse that can shoot a crossbow. Hmm. It's not that hard. You just put your hands here and shoot. Can you I, I never... hide that bag? Are you small enough yeah, to Yeah, you want to try bag? it? Huh? We can put, yeah, we can hide in the bag. Can we? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we can... try, try to see if we can go into the bag. You're going to go in the... In Hold on. You're going to go in the bag of holding. Is that correct? Are you just going to yes. dive in? Yeah, I want to see if I fit into Ashwin's bag. Fan-fucking-tastic uh, ending point for this episode. <laughs> uh, Parati, uh, we'll get back to Orson. That's what we'll pick up next week, everyone. Uh, Prati, um, I will get you that medium yeah, armor separately. Uh, thank yeah, you awesome. for joining us and watching us play an expletive ridden on my part game of dnd i'm jake friday the dm let's go around the horn and you can plug whatever you'd like to plug uh or not plug uh let's start with lex hi i'm lex you can find me on instagram at it period underscore period lex or on twitter at it be lex and dave still talking like my Oh, hey, God. you all fuck faces can fucking find oh. me on fucking Twitter <laughs> at drod fucking three. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Ryan. I'm Ryan Omega. You could find me on Facebook and on Instagram under Ryan Omega, on Twitter under Ryan OMGA, or you could listen to my podcast, Life Action Roleplay, uh, which is on iTunes and just join Spotify. So you can now find me on Spotify. I love it if we could get this podcast on Spotify, but they got limits. Anyways, uh, let's send it over to Richard, the person who plays Mirrorface. How dare you? You're not Mirrorface. Uh, You're Richard. Uh, it, I okay. <laughs> so you can, you can find me everywhere: Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter at Liberty. Um, yeah, I have two podcasts, Awkward Human Survival Guide and Interview with the Nerd. And if you want to see me drunk and recapping um, Never Been Kissed, you can search my web series that I did not continue doing, but it is there, uh, called Cocktail Movie Recaps. <laughs> cool. That sounds entertaining. Uh, Brian, you got anything? Of course not. I'm just Brian. You can't find me anywhere. I just like playing D&D, &D, so here I am. <laughs> And you're good at it, crispy. So you oh got my. that going <laughs> for you. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Uh, my voice can it's like a mix of Seinfeld <laughs> and just a generic old man. Uh, thank you for joining us, Venture Ventures episode 21. Join us next week. Oh my god, it's we'll talk about whether we're doing a Super Bowl Sunday thing. Thank you for joining us. We'll leave it there. Yeah. Uh, hopefully next week. Follow us on Twitter, Venture Ventures, to find out more. 